What's going on guys, it's Caleb, and I just want to give you guys a quick heads up that I am sorry, uh, I didn't mean to cut the last video in half like it was, my intentions were to um, have it play over and um, cover both of the um, exercises for the Rock Paper Scissors game, but unfortunately um, I'm trying out a new uh, rendering option within quick time, so I can see if I can give you better quality by... Um, just exporting it straight to YouTube from QuickTime instead of normally I'll just export then upload the YouTube in a different format. But uh, hopefully we can see how good the quality is. If it's better, I'll start doing them like that. But the only downside is that I can only have 15 minute long videos, so I'm gonna have to start cutting them up shorter and shorter. But you know that's fine. Um, so continuing continuing where we left off um, just a few minutes ago, uh, we are still on the path to create our rock paper scissors game we are still in here we're on the next set of um, exercises and questions um, both choices are the same as where we are going to be starting so um, I'm not sure how far because I did get pretty far before but then I realized I pretty much finished the whole video then I realized I was like oh I can't upload it so I was just like okay so I'll just go ahead and um, make another video so I'm just sitting here rambling on, so um, let me just go over and just uh, go ahead and let's just get started. So let me just go ahead and reset this editor. Um, Alright, so both choices are the same. Now comes the fun part. We need to create a function. It will take two parameters. An example, the two choices made, and then return the winning choice. When programming a game like this, you have to first figure out all the various outcomes. One outcome is the choice the user makes is equal to the choice the computer makes. We carried over the code from the previous section, but it is a comment. Leave it there for now. Below the comment, declare a function called compare. It takes two parameters, choice one and choice two. There is a reason we don't use the variable names, user choice and computer choice, as the parameters. Read the hint for more. Um, detail. So, inside the function, write an if statement such as that if the two parameters equal each other, the function will return the result is a tie. So, pretty much to create a function, I like creating my functions like this, just saying function, compare, and then passing in choice one, choice two, and just know these are just variables that are being passed through. And then what we can say is we can write our if statement. So, if choice one or actually choice one equals choice two and we're setting the equal to checking it by using three equal signs and that's important if you use two or one it won't work for they all mean something different in Java you have an assign you have a check and um, I'm not really sure I don't think the double does anything but I know in Java's uh, Java it does so um, JavaScript and Java are a little bit different but make sure you use three equal signs easy as that so if choice one equals choice two, we just want to return, and uh, we can just return um, the result's a tie. The result is a tie. So there we go. If we go ahead and run this, we got it correct. So let's move on to the next exercise. What if choice one equals rock? Okay, that's a very good question. So. Scrolling down, I already have some of the code here. Let me just go ahead and reset this. Give you guys a, a quick sneak peek. So what if choice one is rock? You're doing great. Now consider the other scenarios. Let's break down the problem down a little bit. What if choice one is rock? Given choice one is rock. <laughs> if choice two is scissors, then obviously rock wins. If choice two is paper, paper kicks rock's ass and paper wins. So how do you structure this? It's a bit different from what we've already seen. We will first have an if statement, and then the code inside the if statement will be another if statement. So, essentially, we have an if within an if, so we have a hierarchy of if statements. So, forget what I just said, that's just confusing you. <laughs> you just pretty much have an if statement within an if statement. Under the existing code in the compare function, write an if statement where the condition is choice1 equals rock. In the code block for the if statement, write an if else statement in the statement if choice 2 is scissors, return rock wins, otherwise return paper wins. So, 
pretty much what we're going to do here and for the next three exercises, really two exercises, is to write each scenario out. And when I say scenario, um, I mean coming into our function here. And as you can see, I have some white space right here that I left because I know I'm going to have to create more if statements. But we're going to have to create two or actually three scenarios. And what it's going to do is going to take whatever the uh, choice is. So it's going to take choice one. It's going to compare it to rock or paper. And then it's going to compare choice two to rock or paper. And then it's going to result the winning of the two. And you'll see how we do this whenever we get to coding. So let's just go ahead and get started. And first we want to do is we want to compare the if statement with um, the condition choice one equals rock. So if uh, choice one equals rock. And then within this if statement we want to make another if. We want to say if choice two equals um, if choice two equals scissors uh, scissors and then right here we're going to return and whenever we return something we're just going to put it out we're going to just say rock wins because if rock is compared to scissors rock versus scissors rocks going to win um, if uh, scissors is compared to um, actually scissors should be a string I don't know why I didn't make that a string but um yeah anyways if rock is compared to scissors scissors is going to win or win or blah, 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 I'm saying that completely backwards if rock is compared to scissors for the third and final time let's get this straight this time rock is going to win <laughs> okay there we go rock is dominant it's going to win so we want to return um, rock wins and to do this we just say rock wins oh, wins and add this now we're gonna put our outs and this is going to say well if choice two isn't scissors what if choice two was paper and obviously choice two can't be rock because if it if it, we both had ro choice one as rock and choice two as rock our first um, conditional statement up here at the top would catch it and it would result as a tie but nevertheless if choice two is paper, we're just going to return um, that paper wins because paper kicks rock's ass. That's right. That's how we do it. And let's just go ahead and just run this. So um, essentially, we're just going to do this throughout the next um, couple exercises and just go ahead and get started. Um, I'm going to go ahead and um, jump down to number three. Ha <laughs> ha. Now we had a couple problems here uh, just a second ago, but or the last video I had some problems in number three, but hopefully we won't get any errors. So great job. Now we have to consider what if choice one is paper? We already know the result if choice two is also paper, where choice one equals choice two, the function returns there is a tie. But what about the other two scenarios? If choice two is rock, then paper wins. If choice two is scissors, then scissors wins. Under your existing code in the function body, use the same structure as in the previous exercise and add in these two extra scenarios. This will involve first writing an if statement and then putting an if else statement inside the first statement. So, like I said guys, it's just repeated code over and over. So go ahead and give yourself a couple dozen lines because you're going to need them. And let's just tab or uh, backspace so we get on everything's on the same tab and that's very important to start doing and um, if you're not doing already just to see have have everything indented the right way it's um, really good especially when you're programming because then you can see oh well this this curly brace goes to here and r really what you people should do they should have it like this where the curly brace is like this but uh, I'm lazy and I don't like throwing in the uh, curly brace and I just think it looks better up here and I like to see the end curly brace with the start of the uh, the actual uh, code that I'm actually running. So in this instance, I'm doing an if statement, and then this is where it's ending, such as the else. Nah, never even returned the else, did I? 
Yeah. Oh, wait, no, I did return the outs. Okay, so this is wrong. Let's tab this over. And, okay, so here we go. Oh. And this will, this is very important, just so you don't confuse yourself within, um, because you, you might put three or four ifs within one if statement, and that will be wrong. It will result in an error. So um, just keeping track of where your spaces are and making sure that you're putting it outside of the if statement. And when I say outside of the if statement, I mean outside of this if statement. And what, what you can do, you can just pretty much just copy this. And you can just paste it down here. And what we're checking now, instead of if choice one um, equals rock, we're going to say if it equals paper. And we're going to change choice two from, um, oops, we're going to change choice two from scissors. And we're going to say if choice two equals rock. Oh, rock. And then um, we're going to return paper wins because paper kicks rocks ass obviously and then else we're just gonna say scissors wins because scissors kicks papers ass unfortunately papers the best way to go so let's go ahead and try run this so we got this correct now we move on to what if section one is scissors oh no we didn't so reset this editor alright so still looking good so, almost there, last we consider what if choice 1 is scissors. In this case, if choice 2 is rock, then rock wins. If choice 2 is paper, then scissors wins. Under your old code, use the same structure as the past two exercises and finish off your function. Call your function and pass in the user choice and computer choice as your two parameter values. We need to use the variable user choice and computer choice uncomment the first lines of the um, code by deleting the back or forward slash asterisk on line one as you can see line one is right there highlighted in yellow also on line nine the variables are now active and can be called press run and your game should work so there is a good amount of code that, um, or a good, a good amount of steps to do in this exercise so um, first things first let's just go ahead and uh, uncomment our top code up here by deleting these little um, asterisks and forward slashes. Now that we have it uncommented, or uh, our com uncommented our code, let's just go ahead and set our variable names up. So choice one equals um, computer choice, and choice two should equal, or actually no, I have that backwards. Choice two equals our computer choice. Choice one is our um, uh, choice one is our user choice. So remember, you get your user choice from the input that you take, and your computer choice is completely random. So now that we have that set, um, our choice one and choice two are very well active now. So now, if we just scroll down, and I'm gonna um, add a space right here just so I get everything nice and neat. Now what we have to do, we have to add another one of these um, little if conditional statements once again. So just go ahead and control C, control V it. And the third time, instead of saying um, paper, we're going to say scissors. So go ahead and type in scissors. And we're going to change rock. Uh, see if choice two equals rock. Actually, we can leave it as rock. Um, and then we would return as rock wins because rock beats scissors. Now else we would say um, uh, paper wins, right? That sounds pretty correct. All right, let's see. Uh, if choice one scissors and choice two is rock. So if choice one scissors, choice two is rock. Rock wins. Else return scissors win. So if yeah, so if it's paper, yeah, it should be scissors. So else if it's scissors or if it's not rock, it's got to be paper and scissors beats paper. So else scissors wins. So that should be good. Now all that we need to do is scroll all the way down to the bottom, outside of our function. So outside of the very last curly brace, 
Um, I'm on line 40. You might be on line 35, 36, somewhere around in there. You might even be um, past that. But uh, you just want to go ahead and console.log. And this will print out our um, our whole game, essentially. So console.log, our compare. Now let me uh, add some space so you can uh, see these. Uh, console.log, there we go. And we're going to pass in our compare function that we wrote earlier in the first uh, chapter. So make sure to pass in the uh, parameters here, choice 1 and choice 2. Now we should have a working game that returns rock, paper, and scissors. So we should have a working rock, paper, scissors game. So let's go ahead and try to run this. Um, so it's going to ask us, do we want rock, paper, scissors? We're going to pick rock. And we won. So sweet. Let's try that again. Um, let's just say paper. And shit, scissors won. We got our ass kicked. Nah, so let's go with paper again. All right, sweet. We won. All right, so let's go on to the next steps. So congratulations on making your awesome game. But now it comes to a, the best bit. You have the skills to build a game of your own design. Below are some ideas. What if the user makes an inter uh, inappropriate choice like dog? How can we extend the function to handle that? The gameplay isn't the greatest. How could it be valuable to wrap the entire game in one function? Hmm. Um, what if players in the game could also choose rope in this game? I'm not really sure how that would work, but that would be interesting to see how you guys would come up with your awesome ideas, because I know you guys are pretty smart. And make sure to leave them down in the comments below on what you decide to do with this. And honestly, you don't even have to do nothing with this. You can just click run and complete this section. In this version, if both players make the same choice, the game returns a tie. What if the game didn't end there, but instead asked both players for new choices? So that, that would be pretty easy. You could just um, reset everything and just call the uh, function again. Um, or really, you can just throw everything back into a big function and call that function from the start. But um, number two, the gameplay isn't the greatest. How could it be valued and wrapped into one function? Um, cases, like um, switches, would um, really come in handy. And um, I'm pretty sure you guys don't know about switches yet or case any of them. But um, you'll learn about them in the control um, flow, I want to say, which is coming up soon. So stay tuned for that. Um, a lot of handy and valuable stuff. But alright guys, if you liked the video, make sure to um, give it a like rating, especially if this helped you guys out. Uh, make sure to thumbs it up, subscribe, um, stay tuned for future videos, and um, thank you guys for watching another tutorial. That's all I have to say. Thank you guys. Have a good night.